Far Cry 6 has landed, and although we're all very familiar with Far Cry at this point, there's some stuff that isn't as obvious. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things Far Cry 6 doesn't tell you. Starting off with number 10, the Triada Treasure Hunt gets you some of the best rewards in the entire game. There's some treasure hunts dotted all over Jada, and they have some pretty decent rewards normally. The ones you're really going to want to finish are the three Triada Treasure Hunts, though. You'll get a ton of stuff for finishing these things, a Resolver Gun, a Supremo, a new Amigo, and a whole armor set if you're thorough. Every other Resolver Gun and Supremo in the game is just something you have to buy, so this stuff is really unique, and it's crazy powerful. Oh yeah, and it's beyond simple to do. You can easily find these places right after getting access to the main island, so there's really nothing stopping you from finding these spots. To make this simple, just go to the Alua Cave, east from Clara's camp on the starting island, Isla Santuario. If you read the note in that place, it'll mark the location of three treasure hunts you need to finish on the map. All these places are enemy free, so there's basically no danger in checking them out. It just might take a while to get some of the more remote ones. They're all pretty fun, especially the ghost house hunt. The objective here is to find three statues and then bring them back to Alua Cave. Do that and you'll get your rewards. All of this stuff is really good, especially the amigo who can take down enemies and make their bodies disappear. So yeah, pretty easy to do, tons of rewards. Completing this mission as early as you can is totally worth it. And number nine, you can scan vehicles using just your camera. Here's the thing the game bizarrely never tells you about, even though it feels like a major feature. Whenever you get in a car, the game tells you that if you want to keep it, you got to take it back to a vehicle station. But there's actually another way that's a lot easier to do. Just whip out your camera, line up a shot, and scan the car. Wait for it to finish, and you'll automatically, immediately unlock all the parts, colors, and the entire car for your collection. This doesn't work on military vehicles, though. Those you have to drive back to a vehicle station like the tutorial message says but pretty much everything else just let you scan it and go why they make you have to figure this out yourself i have no idea but knowing about it saved us a lot of time and number eight is this great unique rocket launcher location. Far Cry 6 really showers you with guns, but the one thing they can be kind of stingy with are explosive weapons. It can take a while before any rocket launchers or grenade launchers show up for you to buy, which can be frustrating when the game has you deal with stuff like helicopters and tanks pretty much right from the start. So you want a really good rocket that's easy to get early in the game, right? Here's our tip for that. There's a treasure hunt that's hidden in pretty high level enemy territory, so it's not a place you're probably going to go to normally, but it's a relatively safe journey as long as you avoid checkpoint. It's this place found in the northern part of the Novermentas region called the Star Rocket Brewery. Because it's a treasure hunt, there is absolutely no danger here, so just solve the simple puzzle and get your reward, the Into Orbit Rocket Launcher. This thing is awesome. It's got a lock-on mod already installed, and it does a ton of damage to pretty much everything. It's one of the best rocket launchers in the game, and it's also one of the easiest to get as long as you know where to look. And number seven is Gorilla Camp Upgrade Tips. There's a lot of options for upgrading the Gorilla Camps in this game, so let's quickly run down what we think are the best upgrades to get first. The first is so obvious we hardly even need to say it. The hideout network unlocks the wingsuit and the ability to airdrop into locations, so that's completely awesome. Get that first. What's even better is that if you upgrade this place, you will start getting supply caches that reappear every single day and can sometimes contain some of the more rare resources so having that available early in the game is beyond helpful. The Bandito Barracks is good for two reasons as well. It unlocks Los Bandidos missions, which is obvious, but it also has a store where you can buy armor and sets. Trying to find a complete set out in the wild can be a pain, so having some place where you can just buy this stuff is of course quite nice. The Hunter's Lodge is another one very much worth thinking about. Hunting in this game isn't as important as in like Far Cry 3, but it can get you a lot of supplies pretty easily if you find a good hunting spot. Even better are the rewards you get for upgrading this place. You get a unique weapon every time you upgrade it, and these bows are really great. You'll get everything eventually, but these three are probably the best to get first. And number six, the best loadout options. Uh, there are a lot of options when it comes to building your loadout in Far Cry 6. It can even be a little overwhelming, so here's a few general tips. For one, that rifle they give you at the start with the silencer and armor-piercing bullets, yeah, honestly, that is a great gun. You can carry that the entire game if you want. Of course, you can swap it out for something else, but having some kind of rifle with armor-piercing bullets and a silencer is a must. Swap out that starter silencer as quickly as you can for something better because the upgraded ones are 
are way better. But otherwise, like, stick with something that works, this gun. Along with some kind of machine gun that's good against soft targets, having something to quickly deal with that annoying flamethrower or poison spraying enemies can also be very helpful. Sounds a little weird, I know, but I think giving some pistols, some explosive ammo, is probably your best option here. And a proper rifle does everything that a pistol does, but better, so just having a regular old pistol is kind of pointless in this game. Even if you give it explosive ammo, then it can one-shot at any enemy that shoots flames at you, so it does good damage against armored vehicles as well. One thing about this game is that all your secondaries are unlocked from your Supremo weapon, so some of these are almost essential. Uh, for some reason, healing syringes have to be unlocked and equipped as a gadget in this game rather than just something you can get normally. If, if you're wondering where healing is, that that is that. That's how you deal with that. At number five, where to get an old friend. One of the fangs for hire you could get in Far Cry 5 was a pretty good dog named Boomer. He is back in this game, uh, but he's one of the harder amigos to hunt down. To find him, head to the Balacreas region and go to Camp Maximus, the guerrilla camp for the area. Now, find a shipping though in there. Uh, like, I, I spent way too much time looking for this thing, but just like follow the purple quest marker. That is where it is. Reading that will start the mission Boomer Bust, uh, which you head to the mission point you find the container you can hear barking from inside that unlocks boom boom the name your guy comes up with for him as well as a few easter eggs from far cry 5 functionally he is pretty much the same as he was in that game he'll fetch his stuff dropped by enemies which is especially handy if you want to do a little farming by hunting animals and number four, how to deal with annoying choppers. Probably the most annoying enemies in this game are these choppers. They got tons of health, they can airdrop in enemies to harass you, and the machine gun's pretty deadly. So being able to deal with these things quickly is a must, but at the same time, you're pretty limited in terms of option. That into the orbit launcher is an awesome way to take choppers out. The lock-on function makes it a total breeze, but if you'd rather not use it, there are some other good options. The Tesla Suprema weapon is another a good way to take them out is primarily a stealth weapon but it's probably the most useful for disabling tanks and helicopters the only problem is you gotta wait for it to charge up so even better there are emp grenades sticky ones in particular are best for moving targets uh, they'll take out any vehicle in one hit the only thing limiting about them is their relatively short range. If you've got a grenade launcher, you can actually upgrade it with EMP rounds, and that's probably the best all-around gun to use against choppers. So basically what you want is some kind of EMP weapon or a rocket launcher. Having something to take out helicopters in this game makes your life so much freaking easier on Jada. And number three, avoid pesky road spikes by getting a car upgrade that just destroys them. Checkpoints from Far Cry 2 are back with a vengeance in this game. Uh, they're not maybe as bad as they could be, but you can actually permanently take these things out. The spike strips they deploy are so annoying in these places are everywhere. Uh, if you don't want to bother clearing every single one of these things out though, there is a vehicle upgrade for you. Check out the ride weapons tab at the workbench and look at the grill mounted ram. At least one of these things can be upgraded to destroy road spikes on impact which does exactly what it sounds like it makes you so you can plow through any checkpoint pretty much scot-free it's a small thing but seriously it's so useful to somebody like myself who just wants to get where they're going without having to clear multiple checkpoints to get there and number two, there is an air dash in this game. Uh, yeah, Far Cry New Dawn introduced double jumping into the series, but this one has a literal air dash. You can get it by equipping the Furioso Supremo, which confusingly makes it sound like you can only do this with a special ability when you press LB and RB, but no, you can do it whenever. If you want to play a highly mobile character, this is just an awesome power to have. Really, the actual Supremo power isn't something special, but being able to air dash all the time, that's freaking great. Just be be careful about the backdraft though it's pretty easy to accidentally set your amigos on fire with this thing and that doesn't feel great and finally at number one some of the classic abilities can only be used with the right gear equipped they've completely dumped the skill tree from this game it's probably really disappointing to some people actually because you don't start with any of the classic far cry skills unlocked instead certain abilities are locked behind what equipment you are wearing like most gear just gives you like a minor boost or whatever but certain pieces of gear unlock totally new abilities probably one of the best is the grenade pin takedown it's been 
been a staple of the series since Far Cry 3, but the only way to use it here is to equip the impact gloves. That's why having a place to buy gear is pretty important in this game, because it's possible to totally miss out on certain skills like this one if you don't find the right chest to open. There is more gear like this out there, but I just wanted to highlight this one because grenade pull, probably one of my favorite abilities, so I didn't think it was even in the game until I found these gloves. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course and subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.